Greetings and welcome to this TV44 special Decision 2021, the Lima mayoral race. For the first time in more than three decades, the city of Lima is electing a new mayor. And for the first time ever, that mayor will be a female. Lima voters are choosing from two candidates in the November 2nd general election, Sharita Smith and Elizabeth Hardesty. I interviewed each of the candidates individually, asking them generally the same questions. Originally, we planned to cut up each candidate's answer and show those answers to you back to back so you could compare each candidate's thoughts. But after receiving a comment that it was assumed the media would cut out the good parts, we've made the decision to air each interview in entirety with no edits. I flipped a coin to determine who will go first, and that went to Elizabeth Hardesty. We're conducting a nonpartisan interview with mayoral candidate Elizabeth Hardesty. So happy to have you here in the studio at TV44 and great to even talk to you a little bit ahead of time to get to know you a little bit. Thanks Good. for being here. Thanks for having me. So both you and your candidate will receive equal time in this questionnaire period and you'll both receive the same questions or topics as well. Um, encourage you to just answer whatever comes from your heart because that's really what we want to hear. And we'll go ahead and get started. Sure. Feel free to drink water whenever you need to. Thank you. No problem. First of all, Elizabeth, just explain to me why you want to run for Lima's mayor. I wanted to run because I haven't seen a whole lot of positives come out of Lima in the last 10 years as far as where it's going, the path it's taken. We had the worst homicide rate last year. I think there's some housing issues we need to look at, and I just think it needs to grow again. We've watched Finley grow around us. We've got the opportunity of watching Crytersville grow up around us, and some of those things we need to be benefiting from. And go back to, the, you know, I grew up in the late 80s and the 90s here when it was booming. We had two mm -hmm. malls. We had tons of things to do, great school systems, and I think we need more of that. Bring Lima pride back. All right. Well, you mentioned housing, you mentioned crime. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but let's look at some positives before we get into maybe the, the things of Lima that need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. What do you like about Lima? That it's a livable town. I joke that anything in Lima is 10 minutes away. It's fantastic. But then if you do want to get away, we've got the rail system. We've got the Highway 75 running down here. We've got air, international airports, plenty within driving distance between Detroit, Cleveland, Columbus, etc. Um, it's a great place to raise a family. I do feel the Lima City School system is very good, not to mention the six surrounding systems as well as LCC. So we've got great school system here. Um, we have a good community in general. We've got lots of churches around, lots of pastors that want to bring family part into it. Absolutely. Good. Well, let's go into now and talk about some issues. Um, there are issues. Without a doubt, we know <laughs> Lima has issues. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about those for a little bit. I'm going to bring up some words and... Okay. Share what you think about. You can share what you see as concerns, but I also encourage you to share what you even see might be some solutions that could come up. And the first word, you've already mentioned it, hmm. crime. Okay. Crime. Um, I see crime as a big issue. It's one of the main platforms I'm running on is to how can we make, make Lima safer. Um, I have put in place the idea of inducing a director of safety services to make sure that my administration has it on the forefront of our mind, as well as making sure that the safety service folks have someone to go to, that they trust, that they can respect, and make sure we are staffed, make sure we're getting funding we need. This person I envision writing grants in order to make sure we can add those staff members to LPD and the fire department and such. And so I think that's gonna help make it a whole so that they feel comfortable in working for the administration and hopefully keeping the city safer. We need some recruiting efforts. We just got four new ones in this week, which is wonderful. And so hopefully we can continue to add people and younger staff to those departments. We sometimes hear different numbers when it comes to crime. Sometimes we hear, like you mentioned, homicide numbers were not good this past year. Mm -hmm. Other times we will see things that'll say, well, crime has improved. Do you have an, a thought on what maybe Lima has really seen over the past few years? Um, if you look at statistics, I have a math degree, so I tend to go that route with numbers. The crime rate in the last 20 years peaked in 2008, but it was still three times that of the national average. So crime rate in the city has technically gone down looking at the numbers, but we're still double that of the national average in Ohio average. And that to me doesn't say our city's safe. It's hard then to talk businesses into coming, new employees into coming, getting doctors to bring their family to move inside of the city. So all those things are tied up and that's why we need to address the crime issue. Mm -hmm. Well, businesses, you just mentioned business. Mm -hmm. We do want business and yes. economy to come to our city, and we haven't seen a whole lot of it. So let's share your thoughts on that. 
both what you've seen in the past, your thoughts on the present, and what we can do in the future. Um, I will give Lima large credit. We have wonderful small businesses, um, small business owners that live in the city, outside of the city, et cetera. I think one of the things I'd like to see is the business owners that live outside of the city that may not get to vote on tax issues and or even this race have a lot more say in what happens in the city since they do own property or rent property for their businesses. So we've got a great system there already set up, or we've got a great amount of businesses already here. So I'd like to encourage those to continue to grow, including, including hiring you know, students right out of Rhodes College, students right out of um, Western Ohio University and everything, out of Lima Senior as well. And so that we can encourage them to hire locally and keep them going. Um, bringing in new businesses, I think it's important for the city to work with those companies. I know we've given tax abatements before. I know we've given free water or discounted water and utilities. I think you've got to give a company a reason to come and want to be here and show them that we do have a Lima community and a place that they want to bring their business and employees to. And do you think it's possible? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I didn't mean to answer that for you. I wasn't. I assumed you'd say that. But mm -hmm. we, want, we want to see the big... We want to see the big industries come to this area. Yes, and there's no reason why we can't. We have some of the infrastructure here already. Yes, some of the buildings either need torn down or maybe redone to bring those. There's a whole bunch of talk about spec buildings. There's pros and cons to those. But I think we have the ability and the resources around it. I talked about the infrastructure, the roads, the local airports, the train systems to bring some of those larger companies in. All right. Moving on to another topic. Um, Housing and rental properties. Mm -hmm. We've heard about landlords, we've heard about tenants, mm -hmm. we've heard about dilapidated housing for many years in our city. Mm -hmm. uh, some things have gone to green spaces, but a lot of things are still falling apart. Right. And I think the hardest issue with housing facing Lima is we can't grow. We have nowhere to expand because we have the suburbs around us. So you've got to look at the land base we have and figure out how to utilize that to the best of the community's ability. So if you've got a property that, say, the county tore down houses a couple years ago, if you've got that property, what's next door to it? Because you need two properties to build a brand new house. Mm -hmm. And so how can we make the most use of what we have? As well as you talked about dilapidated properties, yes, there's a lot of them. And do you take block by block as different, I mean, I know Cincinnati did this in a couple of um, small cities in Pennsylvania did this. They took blocks or neighborhood sections tore down all the dilapidated houses, revamped some of the newer ones, and then built new stuff to make it another a community and a neighborhood back so that the kids can play and everybody can feel safe. And how do you do that across the entire section of Lima, Ohio, to make that happen? Work to be done, but it Always. sounds like you're, you're willing to, <laughs> to put the work in. All right, completely different topic, racial equality. That was topic last year, of course, with mm -hmm. the George Floyd death. That became a right. big thing. Um, it was discussed with city council. Um, you hear about it here and there. Share your thoughts on racial equality in the city of Lima. Everybody in the city of Lima should have the same rights. They shouldn't be scared to walk down their streets. They shouldn't be scared when an LPD officer drives by. And I think there needs to be a few more events where maybe people meet the folks that are working. I know a lot of the LPD officers do not live in the city of Lima. Again, pros and cons to that as well. But go out and meet the neighborhood, and they tend to do that, at least on my ride along. They try to talk to the kids, say hi to the neighbors that are always sitting out on their front porch. And so maybe some more community events. We missed Fourth of July this year, and I know that's a great place for everybody to come down to the Bowl and Froat Park and mm -hmm. really enjoy each other's company. Um, school systems, I don't think there's anything splitting in any of the school systems, especially with open enrollment. So I see that as a non-issue for that topic, but hopefully people can just become more, I hate to say Lima oriented, but city oriented. Again, we wanna bring the pride back and make sure everybody has the same opportunities because there are fantastic programs out here for finding jobs, for getting educated, for getting training, for getting certified. And we just need to make sure the people of Lima know all those and can work together to help each other boost morale. Speaking of working together, sometimes we hear about the importance of being able to work with the municipalities surrounding, mm -hmm. not just the county, but also the townships as well. Mm -hmm. Share your thoughts on that. Um, the biggest thing I'm going to say about that is I bring none of the biases the current administration has. I think that is a large benefit to me running is because I haven't worked with any of these people in the past, any grudges, any best buddies. None of that comes in. We start from a clean slate. 
so I can make relationships with the county, I can make relationships, well, county commissioners in the county, I can make relationships with the suburbs, trustees, in order to better Lima as a whole. How can we work together for utilities to work? How can we work together to bring companies in who want to be, say, in the Shawnee area, down near the industrial park, so that we all benefit from it? The final word uh, topic that I want to bring up is quality of life. Uh, there are some statistics in the past that indicated that the city of Lima had a much higher welfare rate than other places per capita. Um, we have graduation issues at times. Um, there are a lot of good pro programs out there, but there are also a lot of people who I feel need hope. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the quality of life right in the city of Lima as opposed, we're not talking Shawnee, mm -hmm. we're not talking Elida, just right here in the city of Lima? So Lima has a very wide range of demographics. A lot of the kids I went to school with grew up with their grandparents. Um, I grew up with my mom and dad until my senior year, and it was just me and my mom, so single family homes. You're gonna get a whole plethora of demographics inside the city limits. And I think a lot of quality of life comes from your home base. And so if you don't have a solid home base, you don't have an aunt or uncle, or you don't have somebody to look up to as a role model, where are you gonna find that? And I know Jobs for Ohio are putting coaches in the schools, so that kind of helps, hopefully, to have somebody encourage them to get jobs and to become a professional or go to college or a trade. But then as well, you've got the churches here in town to maybe find a group that plays basketball on Monday night or a group that does Teens for Christ, some of the programs in here. that They can not replace the home life, but at least give some structure to the younger people as they grow up, um, as well as you talked about the program, so anybody that's in, you know, young adult. You should be able to ha find resources in order to get jobs, to get out of the house, to fend for yourself, in essence, which anybody should want to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we have just about two minutes left okay. in our time. So I want to give you a final opportunity to just tell our viewers, what would it look like for Elizabeth Hardesty to be mayor of the city of Lima? I would like to think that I would bring the city real change and hopefully a vision to a successful future so that we can continue to grow and not go the other way. And how can people get a hold of you? What is your website um, information that people could reach out if they'd like to learn more about mm -hmm. you or be involved in your campaign? So we are on Facebook under Elizabeth Hardesty for mayor and my website is elizabethhardesty.vote and there's an email address on there. You guys are more than welcome to send emails to. It's hardestyformayor at gmail.com. All right, Elizabeth Hardesty, candidate for, historic candidate really, <laughs> for mayor in the city of Lima. We'll, we will definitely have a, a female mayor and perhaps yes. it will be you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here for this TV special and joining us here in the TV station. Good deal, thank you. Thanks. Next, I present to you my interview with Lima mayoral candidate, Sharetta Smith. We are doing a nonpartisan interview with mayoral candidate Sharita Smith. Both candidates receive the same amount of time and will have the same questions in this interview. And let's start out, Sharita, just explain to me why you wanted to run for the position of Lima's mayor. You know, Jennifer, when I first thought about um, running for mayor and all of the questions that I felt like I would be asked, the question of why do you want to run for mayor was one of the hardest questions mm -hmm. for me. Um, and a lot of it was because at first I didn't think, you know, that was good enough. You know, I'm a first time, you know, person running for office. Um, and what if I just say, you know, I'm running because I love Lima. People are going to think that's cheesy, you know, but for me, that really is why, you know, I'm running for mayor. Um, I was born and raised here in this city. I'm a Lima girl with roots that expands across five generations. Um, I always tell people, you know, I caught crawdads at Faroe Park. <laughs> I still call plastic bags Clyde Evans bags. And so this city is in my roots. Mm -hmm. um, and I had the experience um, to go away and work as a public defender, work as a magistrate, get involved um, in community. Um, but I also met younger people my age who were in their community and very involved and excited about moving their community forward. And I wanted that for Lima, and I wanted to be a part of that. And so I began to look for opportunities to come back home. 
Um, I've been home now for four and a half years. In those four and a half years, I've learned a lot more about our city. Um, living here again, you know, going to church here, you know, weddings, funerals, just being involved um, with the community, but also working as the chief of staff um, and learning how to run city government and really understanding what it's like to be responsible for the lives of 38,000 citizens. Mm -hmm. And so I'm running really because I love the city, but I also think that my experiences, both lived experiences and professional experiences, have prepared me to be able to lead this city on day one. So you say you love the city. Mm -hmm. Tell me some of the specific things you love about Lima. So one of the things that I really love about Lima is our people. Um, I think that Lima, um, we are a diverse community um, with um, people that really actually share that same love, but we're also a very resilient community. Mm -hmm. um, we've taken a lot of hits, um, whether you look at, you know, what happened with our economy in the 80s when we lost, you know, Westinghouse and Teledyne, and you think about the threat of Husky, um, and now you have the pandemic, and we also have, you know, a changing economy where we're moving, you know, from a technology age really into a more information technology age. But one thing I know about Lima's people is that we can take a hit, but we are fighters and we come back and we, we there's always a success story for us. And so it's the people really that I love about Lima. Um, and then, you know, other things about Lima, you know, we are, you know, a small town, but we also have some, you know, big city amenities. Um, our location, we're right off I-75. So if I want to go to Chicago, um, to the Taste of Chicago, you know, I can go to that. If I want to go to Detroit and go to the ballet, I can go to that and be there in less than two hours. Um, or if I want to go hiking at Hocking Hills, I can get there, you know, in less than three hours. And so I think Lima Lima is, um, to me, the center of the universe, you know, both um, professionally for me, um, both personally for me. Um, it's my home, but if I want to go somewhere else, I can. So It's great to hear the good things. We all know that there are some not so good things mm -hmm. that exist in our city. So I'm going to name some words, okay. and I just want to hear your thoughts on either what is current what has been the stigma, okay. or even what you think could be done should you become our mayor of okay. Lima. Mm -hmm. The first one we'll talk about, crime. Okay, absolutely. So, you know, crime, um, with respect to Lima, um, if you look at crime and you just want to, you know, look at the numbers and how crime is trending, um, you can see from 2007 to 2019, crime decreased by 39%, 36% actually. Um, so you, you see a pattern where crime is on a downward trend, but then you have the year 2020, um, and with respect to the year 2020, why violent crime and crime overall was also down, it was also the highest number of homicides for the city of Lima. Um, and, you know, for me, you know, no, every single crime um, is uh, horrible, so to speak, um, but when a crime results in a loss of life, as you know, a mayor, but also as just a person who lives here, you don't want to see anyone lose their life. Mm -hmm. um, but what we know about crime, uh, particularly those murders that occurred in 2020, um, there were 13 of those. Um, three of those um, occurred at you know one nightclub. Um, two separate incidents were, were double homicides. But we know about, I think it was six of the 13, they were domestics. Um, and all across the country, and not saying that, you know, Lima, uh, that is a reason why that should have occurred, but as a result of COVID, um, domestics increase by about 8%. Um, and so what that tells me as mayor, um, yes, we need to make sure that our police officers have the resources that they need um, to fight crime, whether that is more personnel, whether that is investments in technology, um, and whether that is even recognizing um, more so the hard work that they do um, and making sure that that reflects in their pay. So therefore we can be competitive with other cities when it comes to recruiting. Um, but we also have to look at crime and do something on prevention as well. Like we have to figure out ways to get to our young people um, before uh, a crime, a life of crime becomes mm -hmm. attractive to them. And so for me, that means, you know, making investments 
um, in our neighborhoods. That means making sure that our community is attractive for businesses to want to come here, but also it is a place of support for even small businesses that want to start and grow. Um, that means that we pay attention to quality of life issues. Um, safety is, is more than, you know, responding to crime. Safety is also how much lighting is on the street, right? Mm -hmm. Because we know, you know, in neighborhoods that have more light, the research also says that the statistics are down. That also looks at, you know, what is the quality of education? Because mm -hmm. we know that a lot of individuals that end up incarcerated are those same individuals that were struggling in school. So as mayor, you know, I'll take a balanced approach to crime. I will be looking at what can we do for prevention? What can we do for intervention? But also what can we do to make sure that our officers have um, the resources that they need? Because at the end of the day, they are the police, right? Um, and they are there to enforce the law. I mean, mm -hmm. I worked, <laughs> you know, as a magistrate for six years. Before that, I worked as a public defender. Um, and so I had the ability to develop relationships um, on a real day-to-day um, -day level with police officers. And I'm grateful for that because that's not an experience that I had when I lived in this community before. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, that allowed me to be able to understand that from a, a practical perspective, we put too much on the police. And that's why as chief of staff, you know, I've been working with the program with the Mental Health Recovery Services Board and Coleman Professional Services so that we can have, you know, behavioral health professionals go out on police calls with the police. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about replacing the police, but we're talking about going out with police officers when they show up at a door, you know, for something that has occurred. Um, and a lot of times what's happening it is not, you know, um, a, a crime in that, you know, someone has, has taken a wallet. It is a breakdown of a relationship. And a lot of time individuals have behavioral health issues. So can we have a professional there that's trained in that area because police officers are professionals too, but they're mm -hmm. trained to enforce the crime, be able to collaborate with police officers to help us. I know I went. <laughs> well, but you covered a lot. Of, you covered a lot of the things that um, I have on my list to okay. talk about here, and we are down to less than four minutes, I'm so sorry. it does go fast. No, okay. no, don't apologize at all because you covered a lot of it here. Okay. Um, but let's talk. Uh, um, let's talk about two topics I want to try to get to, because you talked about quality of life, that was on my list. Mm -hmm. um, business and economy, mm -hmm. and housing and rental properties. Yes. Two separate things, but in the end, the housing and the rental properties does have an impact on people wanting to come here, and, and we need more business and economy as well. These are, Abs these are not discussions that just started yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, these have been discussions for the last couple decades, really. Absolutely. They are discussions that Lima has been having when um, Mr. Farrell yeah. <laughs> struck oil, really. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about, you know, businesses first. Um, so and we're I, down to three minutes. Oh, I'll just let okay. you know. Okay, all right. Let me, let me hurry up. Okay. <laughs> So with respect to businesses, um, you, if you want to call them like tools in the toolbox, right? So we have tools that we use to attract businesses. And one of them for a long time that cities have used have been tax abatements, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really good. Um, long or the short is um, you offer a company X amount of dollars um, if they promise to bring X amount of jobs into your community. Mm -hmm. Jobs are good because, as you said, it brings in more people. Um, it also helps the city increase its tax base so that it can provide more services and be better at the services that they provide. But the other part of that and what the research is showing is that even above tax abatements, an environment that is supportive for businesses goes further than even the tax abatement. So as mayor, and I'm doing even that now, is sitting down and having those conversations with your small business owners, right? Um, I'm talking about the individuals who take their life savings um, to open up a business mm -hmm. because they bake cakes and everyone in the neighborhood likes their cakes. Mm -hmm. um, and supporting um, those um, organizations within our community that provide the support to those businesses as well. Um, so as mayor, again, I will be looking to see what can we do to streamline our processes? Um, what can we do to make sure that we um, take advantage of the connections that we have, you know, in Columbus to bring resources to Lima mm -hmm. to be able to support those businesses as well as the connections that we have, you know, in D.C. to bring resources to support those businesses. But also um, continuing to listen to business owners about what they need to succeed. Good. 
Quickly, okay. can you talk about housing and rental properties? That's been a discussion for many years, and all you have to do is drive around the community to see mm -hmm. what exists. We've got about 30 seconds, and then I'm going to ask you for your contact information so okay. viewers can get in touch with you if they'd like okay. to. Real quick, so housing in Lima, um, the issue is very complex. Um, we need a whole spectrum of housing. You talked about the rental properties. Yes, that's an issue. Um, we need to make sure that we, and I talked about providing resources to business owners, but we also need to also um, provide resources to individuals um, that whether own property that they're renting out or even own property um, that they actually live in to be able to provide investment. Um, into their homes so that the quality of housing can increase. Um, but we also need to make sure that, you know, with respect to Lima, you know, we have over 30% of our residents um, that spend, you know, more than 30% of their income on housing. Um, and so we also have to make sure that we don't run into some of the things that are happening in Seattle, um, that are happening, you know, in Detroit, that mm -hmm. are happening um, in Austin, Texas, to where um, our community becomes a community that people cannot even live in. Um, yeah. And I realize I, I didn't give you I, a yeah, lot of it's time. Not a lot of and you can talk a lot more yeah. on that. But um, let's close by you letting us know mm -hmm. your website, your other information, so that people want to get in touch with you and get more answers. How can they do that? Yes. Um, so my campaign has a website. The website is www. Oh, my kids tell me you don't have to say <laughs> www anymore, Mom. It's sharitaformayor.com. Um, and that's S H A R E. T -T -A. T T A yes, uh -huh. Sharita for Mayor .com. and then the Facebook is also Sharita for Mayor, and the Instagram is also Sharita for Mayor. All right, well that's easy to remember. I'm yeah. sorry we don't have more time that's to talk, fine. but thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, your vision, your plans, mm -hmm. and uh, best of wishes to you as you finish out your campaign for these next few months. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks so much mm -hmm. for being here on yeah. TV 44. You're welcome. Lima voters can choose between Sherita Smith and Elizabeth Hardesty in the general election. Military and overseas absentee voting begins September 17th. Early and in-person voting at the Board of Elections starts October 5th and includes the Saturday, Sunday and Monday before Election Day. Absentee voting by mail for the general public also begins October 5th. Or if you still vote the old fashioned way, just like I do in person at your specific polling location, that's Tuesday, November 2nd. Polls are open from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Thanks again for watching Decision 2021, the Lima mayoral race. I'm Jennifer Beck. We invite you to join us again Wednesday, September 29th, as we will bring you the LACNIP mayoral debate live right here on TV 44. We'll see you then, and we certainly want to remind you to get out and vote in the November general election.